We are going to be recording. Well, how about that? Right on cue. Um, we are recording this meeting this evening so that it will um, be posted on the Columbus Aquatics website, which I'll be sharing with you shortly. It's on here on the next slide. So this, the PowerPoint presentation and the recording will both be record, will both be posted on the columbusaquatics.org website. And um, you can also sign up to receive emails at this link. And we'll put this slide up also again at the end of the meeting. Just to review some Zoom pro protocols, during the presentation, all the participants will be muted. And once the Q&A time at the end of the presentation begins, um, if you have a question, you can wave your hand either physically or by um, using the hand symbol in the Zoom and you'll be called on and unmuted so you can ask your question. And if you have a question during the presentation that you wanna post in the Q&A, you can see that here at the bottom of the screen. Um, that allows us to capture the questions and we'll review those also at the end of the presentation. If you want to mute or unmute yourself, that's typically at the left, lower left corner. And if at, when it's time to exit the meeting, it's over at the right bottom of the screen. So we will start and continue, I guess, with some introductions and then we'll move into um, really what we heard from you in the aquatic survey that was, was out earlier this year and also from the community meeting on May 13th. And then we'll be sharing with you the proposed new pool plans um, for the Glenwood pool, which we're very excited about. And we're also in the process of exploring what some of the pool features might be. Um, then we will uh, invite some time for some Q&A and some other comments from the participants. Oops. So this is the team that we've been working with from Columbus Recreation and Parks Department and Williams Architects Aquatics. Both groups are supported by a deep bench of other staff members who are also supporting this effort. Um, there are many people in the different areas within Columbus Rec and Parks who are also working on this and also within our firm. So um, you'll be hearing from some of these other people later in this presentation as well. So what is the, Rec and Parks Department doing right now. Um, as you know, or may know, there's been this aquatics master plan that is being developed. And there was a survey earlier this year. There've been a number of community meetings and the survey is just start, well, the actual master plan is still in progress. And I think there will be some additional meetings later to share some of the findings of that. We sort of fast track the results for Glenwood and Windsor pools so that we could get started on the design of this project. These are two of the older pools in the system. And so they've been designated as the first two pools for replacement. And so we accelerated our community meeting schedules and got our survey results a little bit early so that we could get started on the design. So the goals of the um, aquatics master plan are really to upgrade and expand the aquatic facilities and programs. We've got a lot of great ideas from people in those surveys, um, a focus on health and wellness, promote diversity, equity, and inclusion, increase the number and quality of parks in the system, increase access to the parks and aquatic facilities, promote safety and security, enhance multimodal transportation connections, everything from bicycles to buses, um, protect and increase canopy coverage of urban forest. You're really fortunate at the Glenwood pool that you have a nice tree canopy and we are, um, we're, we're gonna be able to save most of the trees on the site. So we're um, pretty excited to have that as a natural feature of the Glenwood site. 
So we have appreciated hearing from many of you already. And as I mentioned earlier, there was a community meeting on May 13th that was held on Zoom where we were able to get some feedback. And there was also an aquatic survey where people really shared their interests. Um, we identified really that the pool users for Glenwood and Windsor, they most use the pool for recreational swimming, like 71% of the people identified that as their top use. Um, use by children was at about 49%, lap swimming at 42%, swimming lessons at 38%, swim team at 29%, water aerobics at 27%, rehab or therapy at 13%, other uses, um, and folks who work at the pool totaled about 14%. So you can see there's a variety of uses for the pool and there were people identified that the benefits to the community are really um, some of the swimming lessons and developing swimming as a life skill, year round exercise and healthy living and a place to cool off during the hot summertime. So we've, we've gotten a lot of great feedback and we're gonna share a little bit more about that um, in some of our upcoming slides. So Ted, do you wanna walk us through this? Yeah. A little bit? yeah, this, what you're seeing is an aerial shot of the existing Glenwood pool. Um, the, the pool itself is about 4,700 square feet and it with including the attached deep diving area of the back of the site. Um, surrounding the pool is, is a concrete deck of around 9,200 square feet, and, uh, and then the bathhouse, vintage 1970s, I think, of about 2,900 square feet. And I think we can move on. Yeah, so we have identified some of the, the features that were high priorities. And as we start to look at some of the interactive, family-friendly play features, um, we see things like the water slides, the kitty slide, the water play and spray jets, um, some of these deck sprays and zero grade entry. These are all great amenities that can really help promote that interaction and family play. And they're also multi-generational features um, as we start to look at this and also at some of the, uh, the other utilizations or more programmatic functions of the swimming pool the lap swimming, the swimming team and meets, the swimming lessons, the, the leisure swimming, water aerobics, and then the separate diving well. I, I think it's important to have a separate pool for a variety of reasons, but it's also a very popular feature um, to have the diving boards. And then we also heard, well, first and foremost, we did hear a lot about an interest in a new bathhouse. And, and so that is something that will happen at this site um, and Im improved like showers and lockers and changing facilities and drinking fountains and all of the amenities that you'd like to have in a new bathhouse. Um, some shaded seating areas on the deck, some shelters for having picnic. You're also gonna just have some natural shade from those trees. And then of course some vending and um, really opportunities for families to come together in a multi-generational way, whether it's parents and children or siblings and cousins or um, grandparents, you know, there'll be a lot of opportunities for that type of interaction, um, particularly after the new pool is put in. So this is a, a plan view of the existing or of the new pool, excuse me. Um, Keynote number one on the left side is the new bathhouse area. And as uh, you enter the site kind of through the middle of that bathhouse, and we'll show you a plan in a little bit, but uh, immediately to the right of that bathhouse on plan is the new activity pool. The portions of the pool kind of closest to the bathhouse are the shallower water. It um, starts with a zero edge entry and then we're at keynotes to number nine. That's the wading pool area. That's uh, 18 inches deep at its maximum. And then uh, kind of just immediately above that keynote number eight, that's also activity pool, but it's deeper water. It uh, has areas of 36 inch deep water and 42 inch deep water. 
And then to the uh, kind of below that a little bit is a plunge pool for the water slide that's associated with that to the right. And, uh, and then above that to the north is a six lane lap pool, the 25 yard, 75 feet. And to the left of that is the separate diving well. Um, a little building up immediately to the kind of the upper left is the new filter pool mechanical building. And then uh, the other two smaller buildings, those are actually shade structures, um, sh uh, shelters on site. And then the items in the red are, um, are fabric uh, shade structures. Can we move on? So this is a, an aerial view from the kind of above the parking lot area. And you can see the, um, the play features are suggested there in the, in the shallower water of the activity pool. And then to the right of that, you can see the kiddie pool, which is uh, separated with a barrier from the rest of the pool. That, that water in the kiddie pool is a maximum 12 inches deep um, in that area. And the idea is that that portion of the pool is, a, is more focused on, on kids and toddlers. And then as you kind of move to the, to the left on this image, uh, the, you know, the water in general gets deeper um, and it's possibly focused more on uh, slightly older users, teens and et cetera. But, but obviously anybody can use the pool. Uh, should we go on? Nan, do you want to tap? Oh, there we go. So this is a this is a view from the kind of the back of the site with the showing the same features from a different angle. Um, I think we can move on to the next slide. This this is the plan of the new bathhouse area. Um, you can see in the in the center of it, they kind of the the yellow is the breezeway area. That's the public entry and exit into the pool area. There's uh, a uh, public check-in desk kind of immediately to the right of that public entry area. And then uh, a separate service window that's associated with that for people that need membership cards and similar things. And then to the left of that breezeway are the new uh, men's and women's uh, restrooms and changing areas. It's kind of at the back of those rooms, the, um, there's showers included in the back. Um, and then something that's slightly different on this site versus um, some of the other newer uh, bathhouses that, that have been built, we've included two family changing rooms immediately off of the breezeway. And then kind of to the right of the plan is the staff area of the building. Um, and then above that is a vending machine area, which is similar to other uh, bathhouses in, uh, in Columbus. And this is uh, a couple of images. The top one is from the, uh, from the parking lot. Uh, and then the back is kind of from the uh, middle of the activity pool. Um, one of the goals on this was on this particular site was to kind of match and, um, and um, coordinate with the aesthetic of the adjacent Glenwood Rec Center. Um, to the right of the pool, oh, I think I skipped it in plan, but to the right of the immediately to the right of the bathhouse is uh, where we would be incorporating bicycle parking. Uh, to the right of the top view, kind of where, where that guy in the bike is is uh, riding. So you can also see the service window and then the, the breezeway entrance into the pool area. So the next couple of slides are, are illustrating uh, some examples of the play features that we're currently working to incorporate into the plan. Um, one of the goals is to um, 
have the play features suitable for both toddlers and older kids. Um, we're trying to incorporate uh, thing, interactive features into the play into the play events, you, things that spin and um, what's that? Touch, pad. Touch pads and things like that in order to uh, make it in, make them interesting. Uh, next slide. Yeah, and here's a couple of a couple of other examples of specific features that we're looking at. And so the next couple images are some examples of what um, what might occur. I'll just say neither one of them are, is exactly correct because we're in the middle of doing the play feature design and selection with uh, Columbus uh, Rec and Parks. This it gives you an idea of the scale of the pool and um, the and the number of features that we're intending to incorporate. Yep. Yeah, in, in this image, you can see the kind of where the majority of the features are in the middle of the water there. That, that's the part of the water that's a, a maximum of 18 inches deep. And then on the, on the left side of the pool, on the left side of this image is uh, where the water transitions first down to 36 inches deep, kind of right where Nan's cursor is at. And then as you move further toward that lap pool in the background, that's where the water transitions to 42 inches deep. Yeah. yeah, and then obviously in the very back there, you can see the, um, the terminus of the of this uh, water slides. All right. Yeah, so I think at this point we would open up the um, some dialogue with some questions or some comments. So I don't know if anything has been put in the Q&A yet. Looks like, like maybe one item. Uh, has been asked, what is the timeline for construction? So the anticipated timeline, which is dependent on funding, would be the starting demolition for construction fall of next year, fall of 2022, with completion the summer of 2023. But that's uh, contingent on funding. But that's the anticipated timeline. It's starting at the end of the season next year and hopefully completing at the beginning of the season in 2023. Do we have, do we have an overlay of the current pool and the new pool? Oh, I, you know, I don't have a, an exact overlay of that. Not, not handy anyhow, but um, I could, I could share with uh, some, some of those square, the comparative square footages, if, if that helps. That, yeah, the, the exist, as I mentioned earlier, the existing Glenwood pool, the total square footage of the water is 4,700 square feet in round numbers. And the new pools with all of those uh, separate components are about 9,300 square feet. So the, the pool is almost double in size. And then surrounding it, uh, the existing pool deck was about 9,200 square feet. And our new deck area is about 16,700 square feet. So that's an increase of about, about 60%. So it's a significantly uh, larger pool and facility. If we, yeah, if we, and if we looked at the site, it, more really won't fit, put it that way. <laughs> well, 
I'm going to go back to the site plan view so you can get an aerial view of it. And then I know Claudia had her hand up in the um, originally, and I don't know, Claudia, if you have a question now or not. There's a question about taking out the basketball court to fit the pool. And the answer is the basketball court really remains in place. So this does not impact the basketball court. It will remain. And our, our fence, the fence line around the site is pretty much the same. It's, it's had some slight adjustments, but it the, kind of the area of the site within the fence is pretty much unchanged. Uh, we had another question. Will, be use, will you be using the tree area by the deep end? Um, that, yeah, that tree line at the deep end is generally unchanged. We, we did work a little bit into that tree area, but not much. And it was um, uh, about being able to fit the 25 yard lap pool onto the site. But it's, it's very close to the existing line it's probably 10 or 15 feet different at the most uh, nan you saw the question from james white can you email the area commission p and r chair and overlay map yep we sure can yeah we'll be trying to reach out to the area commission soon with our plans and we can certainly have some preliminary conversations um but that is something that is coming up what other questions or comments do you have oh I, well i want to acknowledge um kyle Pigman had a, a comment earlier that i responded to online he asked um where Leggett Architects was with the overall aquatics capital improvement plan, and they're still working on the plan. Uh, we will have more public meetings to discuss their finding and to get more public feedback on their findings for the overall, for all the facilities in Columbus's portfolio and potential new, new um, facilities also. And, but they're they're still working through that process, and there will be additional public meetings that haven't been scheduled yet. So this, uh, we knew from a while ago that we wanted to um, improve these two facilities and, and redesign them. So we we did uh, prioritize getting public feedback and input for the redesign for these two facilities. But we're still working through the rest of the aquatics capital improvement plan, and and so. There will be more public meetings. We do, we do still hope to have um, an in-person public meeting with that too, but it will be depending on how the COVID situation is also. Yeah, I'm trying to remember. I think that there was a question about the width of the pool. I think, I think it was they were asking the width in this direction, I believe. In what, in this direction? Yeah. yeah, kind of in the north-south direction. Oh, this direction? Uh, yeah, about, yeah, yeah, I think, well, like from, from, oh, you can't see my cursor, kind of the width of the activity pool at the, the 42 inch deep water, kind of from the rope, yeah, that direction right there this, is about this 30. Direction? That's this about, is 30. about 30. Yeah. Okay. And then we have a question. Um, what is the plan for next summer? Assuming this project will not be done by the start of next summer, is the PNR department going to start a program to get kids and community members to other pools in the area? Rachel, do you want to respond to that? So we are, we, the earliest we would start depending on Sunday would be the fall of 2022 would be after the swim season of next year. So we hope to uh, not impact the summer 
scheduled. I mean, that's that's an anticipated schedule is to start at the end of the sw swim season next year and finish by the beginning of the swim season. But that's all anticipated and also has to do if we get the funding to do this also. Any other questions or comments? Oh, I look at the I swim at Lincoln and love the layout and water features. Well, Glen would be similar. So this is based on the Lincoln model. Um, Ted, do you want to say any more? Or Rachel, you want to say more about that? You yeah, I, I can touch on that. Yeah, is programmatically this pool is almost exactly the same as Lincoln from a kind of water depth area and overall square footage. Yeah, this it's, is Steve. I think part of the biggest difference is you got more more three and a half feet deep water, which is a kind of a vital recreational kind of multi multi generational depth of water. Yeah, yeah three to three and a half yes. feet. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's um it's very similar to Lincoln. So, so to add to Ted's comments, I mean, we did when we went out and got public feedback, we did hear that a lot of people did like the redesign at Lincoln and, and they did want more water play features. Uh, and, and we and improved bathhouses, uh, for sure. So we, uh, and more shade. So we tried to incorporate all of that into Glenwood to be very similar to what uh, Lincoln has and uh, definitely trying to improve upon it too. So we have used Williams, their expertise and to provide, to keep on trying to improve this design. Every single one of our pools, we do try to see what isn't working and what we can make better. And Williams has definitely given us some good guidance and what we can make better. And, and hopefully we'll have, this will be, um, the pool that everyone loves in our facility until until we make the next one. Have a couple more comments. We have a comment from Kyle Pigman saying, got to have public private partnerships with building the new pools. And also a comment from James White, just about um, thank you, everyone. I believe this is in line with the Glenwood, with what the Glenwood director is looking for, and I think it looks great. Please email me if you'd like to meet with our Parks and Rec Committee or the full commission. So we will be following up with you on that, James. Are any of the walls facing the pool open for artwork? Well, that's a great question. Mm. There, uh, there, yeah, there isn't. To be honest, there's not a lot of available space on the bathhouse because of uh, because a lot of it is you know, on the on this site. A lot of the to the south, a lot of it's glass for supervision and then vending areas, um, and then lockers, the public lockers on the exterior. Yeah, maybe go there. You can see that. That's where I was going, Steve. Yeah. Yep. The filter building has uh, some open wall space on the exterior. Yeah, so that would be right here. Yep. This is the filter building. Yep. We have a few retaining walls, but they're not that tall. Yeah, they're. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna go to the exterior. Yeah, so that's a great suggestion. Mm -hmm. And then from Claudia, I lived on the West, wonderful. I lived on the West side as a child, swam at Glen, Glenwood and has the opportunity to be there when Glenwood was first built. I'm very excited. Well, thank you, Claudia. It's gonna be a great facility. 
nice to have those generational connections definitely. So uh, to address Kyle's comment about the public-private partnerships, so the anticipated funding for this would be uh, the city's uh, funds uh, for for the cap from the capital um, funds for this, and we also are requesting several million dollars from community development development block grant funding from the federal government too for building it. So it wouldn't be it'd be a public public partnership we we have not looked into a private partnership for this facility but um uh, once again i mean kyle also asked about the Leggett architects uh aquatics capital improvement program and um that will be something that they will uh, address a, a little bit in that um that full study uh program but it's not a, anticipated to be a part of funding the construction for Glenwood Pool. We have a question about will the pool be heated? We're not anticipating heating the water. We don't have any exterior pools with heated water and we were not going to heat the water here. And then a couple more comments from James. Any artwork either inside or out would be really amazing. I think, again, that's a great suggestion. Are you able to share this PowerPoint with me? And I believe that that's a possibility. It will be posted on the um, Columbus Aquatics website. And certainly we'll follow up with you as the area commission um, secretary, so. Any inside the areas in particular? I'm going to put the um, the screen up with the links again, so you can be sure to find um, the presentation itself and the recording will be posted at columbusaquatics.org. So I imagine that'll be up soon. And any other comments um, from the panelists or the participants? So I, I am. So thankful for everyone who could join us tonight. We are all excited of the team trying to create and build this for the community. And we're super excited that you're, that you've noted that you're excited for this. We do want to provide um, top rated facilities throughout Columbus. And we're so thankful to be able to start at Glenwood. Um, we, if you you do have any other comments, you can reach us through that columbusaquatics.org website and sign up for the emails. And there is, as we noted again, another piece for all of our aquatics facilities being uh, led by Legged Architects, and there'll be a different public meeting um, later on for that piece of it too. But thank you so much for coming out tonight. Hey, uh, Rachel. There was one more question from Claudia. She asked, will there be a cost for admission? I don't have the answer. Maybe someone else can answer a panelist. I would say that that is to be determined, um, but it will be very nominal um, or, or free. Okay, any other comments or questions?
well, we'll keep working. And as Rachel said, the the plan is for construction to start really, hopefully a little bit earlier than a year from now and for the pool to open the following summer. So that's um, a lot of work to do between now and then, but um, we're very excited about this opportunity to be serving the local community. So we wanna thank you for coming tonight and check back probably sometime tomorrow or I don't know, how long will it take to be posted? Do you think, Rachel? Does it usually go up the next day? Uh, it usually takes a little bit longer than that, but it, okay. it'll be soon. <laughs> yeah, so in the next few days, it'll be posted and um, check back. And we look forward to seeing you soon at Glenwood <laughs> in a new pool. <laughs> so thanks again for participating in the meeting tonight. We've gotten some great feedback and We'll be seeing you hopefully soon. Thank you, everyone. Take care, all. Thank you.